When you look at the price action in dollar yen, what is it telling you about the exit from ultra loose policy by the BOJ? And what is it telling you about when to start to put on the long yen call? Well, first of all, we've thought about putting on the, yen, the long yen call for a few months now. So I think I think the time is ripe if it wasn't already a few months ago. Not that we necessarily called the top in dollar yen, but of course, it's hard to call that top. All that we were counting on, in fact, was, as you mentioned, the prospect that the BOJ would move out of negative interest rate policy, move towards a zero interest rate policy. And I think the reason that dollar yen is moving downward these days is not only because we've gotten some positive signals from some BOJ spokespeople about the prospect that they will make that exit. But as you guys know, uh, Japan's unions are seen to be demanding worker compensation increases of above 5%. And I, also, as you know, that's been the largest that we've seen since 1993, I believe. And this is coming from the uh, Japanese Trade Union Confederation, which does represent a big swath, a wide swath of affiliated unions uh, in Japan. If we get uh, somewhere between 5 and 6%, initial demands and we settle somewhere near 5%, let's say, I think that will satisfy the BOJ that we are finally starting to see an upward move in wage growth in Japan. And the, our view is that they will move in April. I think that is the that is our timeline. But I admittedly, the, the, the risk has shifted to the to a March uh, uh, shift in policy. Terry, good morning. Uh, Jim Sullivan here. If we could try to link uh, dollar yen to the Japanese equity market, um, on JP Morgan estimates, 40% of earnings growth for Japanese listed corporates uh, over the last year has been driven by yen weakness. If I look at the overall market, 70% of market performance driven by multiple expansion, not necessarily earnings growth yet, although we do hope that that will come through. Can you walk us through the linkage between your forward view of potentially a stronger uh, yen and what that means for earnings and what, what that means for overall market performance? Right. So I'm not an equity strategist, but I understand the logic between uh, the weaker yen we've seen over the last few months and the expansion of earnings for Japanese companies that especially those that depend on 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 exports and, 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 the, and the Japanese export conglomerates. I would add something else, though, that makes me concerned about the Nikkei at these levels, which is not just the fact that it's gone up so much. I suspect that one of the reasons it's gone up a lot, though, is because we have seen uh, rotation by global asset allocators out of China and willing to take a, a, a bet on Japan, which is the only other very liquid uh, equity market in, in Asia. If China were to gain favor again with global asset allocators, let's say because people start to buy into the story that they are going to deliver about 5% growth by any means necessary or whatever, whatever it takes, then we could see negative uh, uh, returns on the Nikkei going forward. It'll be because uh, those asset allocators that were so happy to jump out of China over the last few months and jump into Japan will simply reverse that trade again. Uh, uh, now, you may make up some of those losses with a stronger yen, obviously, uh, if you're a dollar-based investor, uh, but I don't think you'll make up enough of them given the potential for a retracement in, in, in the Nikkei. So that's my concern about the Nikkei more than the earnings story at this point.